Other interesting political news, you have U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen saying the USA can afford to give money to both Israel and Ukraine since the economy is doing so well. Really? Now, the USA, since two, October 2023, this month, we've given the Ukraine government not $5 million, not $5 billion, not $50 billion, not $100 billion. We've given them $113 billion thus far in a mixture between cash, weapons, and other hard materials such as medical and food. A total compensation package of $113 billion is quite a bit of change, indeed. Now, some might, some might critique Janet Yellen for looking like a human bird or a very decrepit old bird. Some might do that. I would be never, never be so crass to compare her from D to It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Although, I think many people would say D from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is a little bit more a little bit higher mental IQ capacity. Now, in the USA, if you're watching the whole show, so you're watching the full episode today, we just talked about three companies. The whole business section of the podcast today was talking about businesses who are laying people off because of the economic uncertainty and the inflation that our government, including her, caused. And when we had 40-year hyperinflation after we printed more money than ever printed before under both Biden and Trump, she goes, oh yeah, I didn't think that would happen. Whoopsies. Her response was a glorified whoops. And in true government fashion, she still has her job. Because, again, being held accountable or actually being measured by doing a good job, that, that's just too crazy of an idea to have for the public sector, in this, in, especially when it comes to D.C. Ridiculous, to say the least. Now, it looks like she's saying... Oh yeah, we, we just have so much money. Again, how much? That actually is a good reminder. What's the debt clock up to these days? Last time I checked, there's more trillions than you can count. It's almost become a cliche. Republicans and Democrats used to be, well, I was gonna say, who knows if they were really fiscally responsible, but a lot of them used to ironically campaign on the fact that we're gonna get this country back better fiscally. And none of them do, because most of them are too cowardice to actually say the big elephant in the room or big donkey in the room, whatever you want to say, is that the entitlement programs are bankrupting the United States, as well as things like Social Security, which is a Ponzi scheme. By definition, just look up a Ponzi scheme. It's the same thing. And it all comes with the same kernel of idea. They think the government could do a better job than you can, which has never been... I can't think of a single time in history that's ever been true. Social Security being a great example, and as well as many entitlement programs, which is why I think you should just have no taxes and have it done in terms of entitlement programs of helping people, it's infinitely more effective done on a local and religious level. So if you have a local community in your neighborhood or a local religious affiliation, I believe those methodologies are the most effective ways to help people temporarily. But that's just my three cents for the moment. Although thanks to the debt clock, it might as well be 20 million cents because it keeps going up. The current debt clock, and again, this can be edited, so it'll be you know a couple hours off, and it just keeps going up and up and up. I've yet to see it go down. We may have to sell off Hawaii or something like that to get creative. Now, the current U.S. debt, national debt is $33,564,510,600,000. No, $150,000. No, It goes up that quick. Ridiculous, to say the least. And yet, they think they can do a better job than you. The g ridiculous. Now, it looks like she said, quote, America could certainly afford to stand with Israel and, and to support Israel's military needs. And we could also and must support Ukraine in its struggle against Russia, unquote. This is from an interview she had with Sky News earlier this week on Monday. And she continues to say, and look, the American economy is doing extremely well. Inflation has been high and has been a concern to households, and it's come down considerably. At the time, we have the strongest labor market we've seen in 50 years with 3.8% unemployment, unquote. Well, that's also because, very much like inflation, they keep messing with the metrics to make themselves look good. Both sides do this on political law, by the way. It's one of those things where, oh yeah, you think inflation is bad. It's actually worse than you think because 
it doesn't take certain key things into account. And I believe some of those things are actually food and gasoline, which again are the things you need to live. And don't get wise with me, if you have a Tesla, you still have to pay for electricity, and it's usually coming from a coal plant or natural gas plant. So you're, and uh, by the way, all your products get to you from a diesel truck, also known as a semi truck. So your groceries go up twofold, not just because of inflation, because of the price of fuel and the tax, federal tax on fuel as well. Now, she did acknowledge in saying, quote, it's really up to the House to set a speaker and put us in a position where legislation can be passed. It shows that there's a problem with the Republican Party in terms of being able to effectively govern a nation, a country, and it is important that we pass legislation, unquote. Now, Biden also expressed his commitment to support both Israel and Ukraine during a 60-minute interview. Now, Biden said, allegedly, I was going to say that, it's one of those fascinating, concerning things in terms of governments. You're only, in terms of transcripts and especially the White House records, you're supposed to actually transcribe it directly as they're said by the president. That's not what happens anymore. So I say this, take this with a grain of salt or perhaps a truckload of salt, which is not good for your health because too much sodium. Nevertheless, Biden said, quote, we are the United States of America, for God's sake, the most powerful nation in the country, powerful nation in the history, not in the world and the history of the world. We can take care of both these things and still maintain our over, our overall inter, internal defense, unquote. Which, no, you absolutely cannot. If you ever play a game of Risk or just have 18 brain cells or more, resource allocation is a real thing. United States, military speaking, really, the only thing saving the United States right now is the defense industry, and the technology, really. So one of those issues where in terms of recruiting numbers, the only branch that hit their numbers recently is the Marines. Everyone else is not hitting their recruitment numbers. They haven't for years, in spite of lowering the bar more and more and more, as well, not just for the physical standards for the people who are attempting to get in the military, but also lowering the number of recruits that they're trying to get. So they're lowering the goals and lowering the metrics in every way possible and still struggling. It's a huge issue. No one is talking about the United States in terms of the youth not being healthy, not being patriotic. There's a myriad of reasons, a myriad of things we need to change in order to address that long-term issue. By the short term, we have a resource allocation issue. And I'm not saying we shouldn't support Israel. I'm saying I don't know how much resources... I don't believe the government understands that they have a finite number of resources in this particular issue. And in terms of which country is giving the United States more of a benefit throughout the years, again, I know Ukraine makes some Porsche parts, so that's, that's an upside. But says so Israel, there's a much more, a much greater argument, I believe, in terms of international relations of what the U.S. has benefited for, benefited from. I would say specifically the defense industry, since there's a very big symbiotic relationship. One of the largest defense manufacturers on the planet is Elbit Systems. In the United States, they're actually headquartered in Fort Worth, Texas. They're most well known for making the F-35 Lightning II helmet, which is a revolutionary piece of technology. It's all carbon fiber. It gives you the full immersive experience, where if the pilot actually looks down. They don't see their feet or anything. They actually see below the airplane. It was a very revolutionary idea, subsequently costing about $420,000 per unit. That does take into account the research and development costs. It's not just the cost of materials. But there's a lot of sharing of military technology, sharing military assets. I don't, again, the argument with Ukraine in terms of that relationship, I think there's a greater argument to be said in terms of where you allocate resources and it would make more sense to support Israel over Ukraine. Now, again, play any game ever or any own a business, do any scenario, you have limited resources. So I don't know what you, uh, granted, we know it's Janet Yellen, so, but do you think it's possible to support all these initiatives at the same time without having a trade off? And a very wise man, someone infinitely smarter than me, Thomas Sewell once said famously, there's no such thing as solutions, there are only trade-offs. Because again, if you're going to have, you have this amount of resources, giving this much here, well, if you want to give more here, you, got, you have to move it around. So I don't know what the resource allocations are going to look like going forward, but in terms of the most blatant thing I, I about this whole thing is the government saying that the economy, economy is great and we can afford everything. Which, do you think the economy is doing good right now? Does anyone? I can't but think this should be the political blunder of the day. Don't get me wrong. If we did, if we just talked about political blunders, we'd be here, oh shoot, till the, cow, till the cows, cows come home, so to say. It's just one of those things where 
DC is really good at messing up, although they keep getting more money every year and giving themselves raises subsequently. But let me know in the comments, do you, does anyone agree with John and Yellen on the state of the economy? And then how do you think the funding will work? Where's it going to come from? How is our resource allocation going to break down for this, um, this terrible, terrible conflict? It'll be interesting to see, but yeah, in terms of Janet Yellen, she is just further highlighting, I believe, her vast resume of ineptitudes. And yet, she still gets paid more money than I'm sure most people can possibly fathom. So let me know in the comments. Do you want me, should we call it a political blunder of the day or should we do something like that? Or I guess that, that would just be politics in general for the most part. So it'll be interesting to see how the resource allocation breaks down. And as I say, time shall tell. Thank you everyone again for taking the time to tune in. We're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of October. So if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, all the comments are greatly appreciated as well. We try to make the show better and better together. Don't forget to take the time to like the video because it might help with the algorithm. It seems to change on a daily basis of how the magical wizards at YouTube recommend videos or not. But what helps the channel even more out is if you just take the time, and I do appreciate it, take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone, just stay safe and fight the good fight.